John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. I want to show you two other places in the Bible where it talks about the word and the beginning. I've been listening to debates about the earth had a beginning as opposed to the earth being eternal or the universe having a beginning as opposed to the universe being eternal. Apparently, when this first came out, that in all four quadrants of the sky, things were expanding, which means previously they were closer together, meaning this whole concept of a singularity at the beginning. So think about it, before the universe was, and there being nothing, or this singularity, what would it be like? Here it says, in the beginning was the word, What is a word? If I'm sitting here looking at you, you don't know what I'm thinking unless I speak. And my word will tell you what I'm thinking. A word can be for a thing, like the word milk tells you about a white liquid. It can tell you a feeling, I love you or I hate you. But a word is invisible and It only means something to the hearer if it's in our language. I've been making a joke about my mom's cat. No speak of the English. (laughs) You tell the cat to move and he looks at you and sits there. They don't speak our language. Anyway, I wanted to read a couple other really, really cool verses about the word. Revelation 19, again, calls Jesus the word. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true and in righteousness he does judge and make war his eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. Proverbs 8, another reference to what was it like in the beginning and the fact that they're the Word and God Almighty. Doesn't wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. Words going out of her mouth. Wisdom, trying to compel men to be wise and not foolish. My voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. My mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. I just want to point out, who is this talking about? There is no human that could say that. The proverb is personifying wisdom and actually Jesus because Jesus is the only one with no unrighteousness in him. Jesus is the personification of wisdom. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold because wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to wisdom. I, wisdom, 
dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. The froward mouth do I hate. Froward means stubborn, refusing to quit evil. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. Again, me is a reference to wisdom. God loves those who love wisdom. Those who seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. Okay, here's the part about the beginning, verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. So the Lord possessed wisdom in the beginning. Somebody was saying that in the beginning must have been something that generated multiverses. And the the whole multiverse theory, that we are one of many universes, therefore randomness could create this. But the debater was pointing out that a universe generator would have to be something eternal. We would say, hey, God is the universe generator. Anyway, the Lord possessed wisdom in the beginning of his way. We believe that the Lord is eternal. Before his works of old, wisdom was set up from everlasting, from the beginning. When there were no depths, wisdom was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was wisdom brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. Again, this is wisdom speaking. Wisdom who opens her mouth at the gates to instruct the children of men. When God set a compass on the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea its decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight. So wisdom is being personified here and declared to be a partner with God Almighty, the Creator. Rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore listen to me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, be wise, do not refuse it. So again, these are words. He's saying, listen to the words of wisdom. Hear the words of instruction. Blessed is the man that hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Whoso findeth wisdom, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sins against wisdom wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All they that hate wisdom love death. And the third verse I want to share with you is, of course, Genesis 1, using the same words in the beginning and again showing a plurality with God, a partner with God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Okay, I'm going to skip to verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our 
image after our likeness. Who is he talking to? Someone is with him. And again, in John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So we have this concept of a word, of wisdom. Wisdom is imparted by words that Jesus is the wisdom present with God before anything material was created. Your words are part of you. Even though your words leave your mouth, they are still representatives of you. They tell who you are, what you believe, how you feel. So this is teaching that Jesus is God's word. He left God's mouth and came to earth to tell us who God is, what he wants, what he believes. He is the essence of God himself, the very essence of wisdom. Just like you have to have a blueprint before you make something, the Lord had to have a blueprint before he created the universe. Wisdom was always there before time, space, and matter. An eternal intelligence 